So now at page 15, 215, number 20, we have a little bit different direction. It says, find all points of inflection. That's all it says. All right, so point of inflection means concavity changes. Concavity follows the sign of y double prime. So anytime you are asked to find points of inflection, as you will be on the AP exam and elsewhere, when you go to find points of inflection, when you see the, that phrase, that tells you to look for where y double prime changes sign. Now here's our y for number 20. I picked one of the harder ones um, to do as an example. Uh, because it's a quotient, and this quotient, since the plus sign's in the denominator, not the numerator, I can't separate it into uh, you know, two different fractions and make it easier in any way. So we're just stuck with this as it is. We're gonna have to use quotient rule. Now if we were asked to find the extreme values, we probably would wanna use first derivative test for this one because the second derivative test, as you will see, the second derivative is going to be kind of forbidding to find and work with. However, since they didn't ask us for extrema, they asked us for points of inflection, there's only one thing we can do. We have to find y double prime, and we have to find where that y double prime changes sign. All right, so let's start with y prime, which is straightforward, right? I'm going to do f prime g, so my f prime is 1, and my g is x squared plus 1, and then I go minus uh, f g prime, so f is x, g prime is 2x, so f g prime is going to be 2x squared. So if you're not sure about that numerator, work it out separately. And then it's over g prime, uh, sorry, g squared g squared like that, okay? Now, because we're gonna have to do this, usually I like to leave the denominator squared like that, but because we're going to have to do the second derivative, I think it's gonna be helpful for us to square this out because we're gonna have to do g prime, and then g prime is gonna end up having a chain rule. It's gonna be a huge mess. So I can at least get the chain rule out of the g prime by squaring out the denominator. I'll also combine my uh, like terms at the top. So I'm not gonna do any calculus in this next step. I'm only gonna do algebra. Therefore, I'm still writing y prime instead of y double prime. So now I have, I'm gonna write one minus x squared for my numerator. So I can see that that could factor, but I'm not sure that that profits me, so I'm not gonna do it. In the denominator, I'm going to square that out, so I'm going to have x fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. All right, so that is y prime. Now i got to get y double prime, and that's, this is where things get a little messy. So I have to do um, f prime g, so that's going to be negative 2x times x fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 minus f g prime, so that's going to be 1 minus x squared times uh, g prime is going to be 4x cubed plus 4x. Yeah, right? Yeah, that looks good. All right, over. Uh, so I'm going to write the denominator. For the denominator, I have to square this, right? But I'm going to go back to here just to keep my denominator simpler because this and this are the same, right? So let's write x plus one to the fourth power just because that's easier to write. And I don't have to do another derivative, so I don't need to worry about the fact that this g would give rise to a chain rule again. All right, so now we'll just try um, straightening this out a little bit. Let's distribute the negative two x. So I have negative two x to the fifth uh, minus four x cubed minus two x. And then for this, uh, let's go ahead and keep the minus out and then do the uh, distributive property, so I have uh, one, uh, 1 times 4x cubed is 4x cubed, and then I have 1 times 4x is plus 4x, and then we have minus 4x cubed, at least that's a mercy because these two cancel, and then negative x squared times 4x is, uh, that's another negative 4x cubed? Gonna... Gonna... 4x, 4x cubed, I have 4x to the fifth because this is x squared. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so 4x cubed plus 4x minus 4x to the fifth and then minus 4x cubed. Okay, so uh, moral of the story there is don't rush these things. Minus 4x cubed, okay? And then over the denominator, which is x squared plus one to the fourth power. All right. So now let's try uh, combining everything, distributing and combining. Um, let's, let's just go uh, in uh, descending order of power. So for my 2x to the fifth, I'm going to have negative 2x fifth minus negative 4x to 2x fifth. So it's going to be positive 2x fifth. And then let's see, I've got some cubes. Um, the 4x cubed and the minus 4x cubed cancel out. So I just have minus 4x cubed. 
And then for my x's, I have negative 2x minus 4x. So that is going to be just negative 6x. Okay, all right, I like it. And that is over 1 plus x squared to the fourth power. Okay, now I need to know where y double prime changes sign. All right, where does it change sign? Where does y double prime change sign? Okay, so the first thing I need to do, if I want to know where something changes sign, the first thing I need to do is set it equal to zero. So I'm going to set uh, 2x fifth minus 4x cubed minus 6x over 1 plus x squared to the fourth power equal to zero. So now one thing I'm going to notice is that this denominator can never be equal to zero. Therefore, this whole fraction is equal to zero only when the numerator is equal to zero, right? Because my denominator cannot equal zero. So I have to square a number, it's going to be a positive number, add one, it will be positive, fourth power will be positive, I cannot have zero in the denominator. All right, so I end up with 2x fifth minus 4x cubed minus 6x equals zero. It starts to look a little more manageable. I can factor out a 2x, and then I have x fourth minus... Uh, 2x squared uh, minus 3, right? And then this can factor in uh, quadratic form. So I can call this x squared, uh, let's see, minus 3 times x squared um, plus 1 equals 0. Okay, now I just set each factor equal to 0, and I have my potential points of inflection. So 2x equals 0. If I have x squared, I'll go ahead and write x squared minus 3 equals 0, and x squared plus 1 equals 0. This will give me x equals 0. This will give me x squared equals 3, so x equals plus or minus square root 3, and this has no solution. All right, now these are the points where y double prime is zero, but does y double prime change sign at those points? Because in the AP exam would love to give you some points where f double prime is zero, and yet f double prime does not change sign. So we've seen a lot of examples of what that could look like. Um, I know that f double prime that f double prime changes sign at all these points by going back to multiplicity. The multiplicity of each factor is one. Remember, even though this is an x squared inside, the multiplicity is out here. This is really the factor is x plus square root of three, x minus square root of three. So um, since all factors have odd multiplicity, uh, f double prime changes sign at x equals 0 and x equals plus minus square root of 3, so these are the points of inflection. I'm running out of room on my paper. All right, now, to, I haven't really found the points of inflection. I found where the points of inflection are. So now, the points of inflection, you have to go back to the original function and say where, where they actually fall, because we need the y-coordinates. So um, y of 0 is equal to, that one's easy to figure, it's 0. And y of uh, square root 3 is square root 3 over 3 plus 1, so it's square root 3 over 4. And y of negative square root 3 is going to be negative square root 3 over 4. So I can say that 0, 0, square root 3, square root 3 over 4, and negative square root 3, negative square root 3 over 4, are the points of inflection. My justification for that is I've shown here that f double prime changes sign at all of those points. All right, now one last thing. Um, this graph is a little bit interesting because like, this is a sort of simple looking rational function, right? Doesn't even have any vertical asymptotes. So, um, so you know, how does it have these three inflection points? So I made a graph of it. It's right here. This is x over x squared plus one. And here's the graph, right? It's a very simple looking graph, but notice how the graph is concave down here. And then square root of 3 is 1.7, so right around here, the graph changes to concave up, right there, concave up. And then at x equals 0, we're concave up, now we're concave down, so at x equals 0, we shift to concave down. And then see how this part is concave up again, right? That's at around 1.7, so that's your square root of 
three again. I wonder if doing a vertical zoom would make that concavity more obvious. All right, so there you go. So you can see that we are concave down, concave up, concave down, concave up. That's what happens at those three points of inflection, none of which has a horizontal tangent. Pretty interesting problem.